messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise Bismillah alhamdulillah Sometimes we can go straight through the lives of the prophets one by one by one to a point, and other times we're going to go through and mention them, not in any particular order, but according to the message that they have, because the message is always the same. It doesn't change. The biggest message of all. Remind me, what's the main message? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And I love the way you guys do that. That's sweet. That is really sweet. You got it. That's the main message. If we don't get anything else from our program except that, inshallah, that's sufficient. But there are many, many other things that we're going to be talking about. Now, to continue, after the time of Nuh, alayhi salam, you have to realize that a lot of his people were very impressed with this big sign because I guess that flood was probably one of the biggest signs they had ever imagined, wouldn't you think? That was pretty big. But still after him, that were from his own children. Now remember, this is from his own children and his own believers. People with him, there were still some people later on who began to disbelieve again. They began to lie. They began to change the message and teach what? To worship the creation instead of the creator. And as they did, their society will do again the same thing. It starts to break down because it's full of lies. And human beings begin to make the rules. And when humans make up the rules, who knows what it's going to be? Like if the boys make all the rules, the girls won't get any, anything fair out of that. But if the girls made up all the rules, the boys wouldn't like that, would they? And if the old people make rules and young people can't say anything, that's not very good either, is it? How about if the rich make all the rules and the poor people don't get to say anything? So it matters very much to know that it's only fair if Allah, the Creator, the one who created us, the one who makes everything, the one who takes care of everything, He's the only one who gets to make the rules. But it's up to us to understand it and follow it. Some of the prophets who came later on after Noah, they also were abused by their people. As we're going to learn in some of the stories, you're going to hear about prophets that were horribly abused. Some of them were punished. Some of them were whipped and beaten. Some of them, they even killed them. They killed their prophets. Can you imagine such a thing as that? In fact, they tried to kill Jesus, peace be upon him. They tried. And what about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did they try to kill him? Oh, yeah. We know real well about that. Did they beat him? Oh, we know they threw stones on him. There's so many beautiful stories we have of the prophets. And you learn a lot from it. But the most important thing is don't consider these just stories. These are not just fables. These are not just tales. But these are real life experiences that real people lived. And they saw it. And we know it. So you and I will take benefit from it. And we'll see in our life what we need to do with it. When we deal with our parents, we have to be what? Obedient, good to them. If they get old during our life, we have to take care of them. And even if they get really, really sick or bad, we can't even say oof when we're trying to take care of them. This is in the books before, and this is also in the Quran today. We have to take care of the parents. What are some of the other things we have to do? Well, it tells us real clear not to commit adultery. That means you have to get married. You get married. You don't have a boyfriend. You don't have a girlfriend. What else? Don't lie. Don't say something and you know it's not true. What else? Don't steal. Don't take things that don't belong to you. This is what Allah says. But listen to this one. Don't have envy. Because even at the time of Adam, alayhi salam, remember about the boy who was envious of his brother. He had envy. Hasid. How come you get the good-looking girl and I don't? This is envy. Hasid. Don't love the things 
that are going to go away. Don't fall in love with these things that you wanted so much that you forget it's all going to go away. A beautiful girl becomes an old lady, doesn't she? <laughs> He's not beautiful anymore, is he? A handsome man, he becomes the old man. He's not so handsome anymore. Except for me, I stayed handsome, alhamdulillah. <laughs> a fancy car becomes old, it becomes junk. Nobody wants an old car. Ah, what's that? I don't want that. A nice big house becomes old, falls down. Have you seen old buildings where you live? Real old, old buildings? You said, ooh, look at that. But at the time they built it, people went by and said, oh, oh, I wish I had that. Okay, you can have it today. Uh-uh, I don't want it. So don't have that. You don't want to have this hassid for something. Make sense? Yeah. All of these things that we've been talking about in the lives of the prophets will benefit us only if we get the message, only if we get the meaning of the story. Otherwise, they're just stories. You know? Like SpongeBob. It's just a story. It's nothing. Huh? And other things. Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck. These are just stories. But the prophet's stories are something that we can use. And it can benefit us. Shall I tell you another one? Well, it turns out that from Nuh salam and his people, this went on and on for a while. Things were pretty good. But people began to spread out. They began to go to different places and out further and further. We also know that Idris, he had also gone out. He had taken off and went to a place called Mesr. This is called Egypt. We call it Egypt. Now, there's a very interesting story about something here, too. Amazing story, actually. You see, one of the descendants from Noah, his name was Ibrahim or Abraham. Now, we've got a lot to talk about with him. But to start with, we already know that his father was the statue maker. He built the statues. You remember the story what happened when <laughs> Abraham didn't like the statues and he broke them all? And the people want to know, hey, how come, you know, what's this? Did you do that? He said, why are you asking me? The big statue's got the hammer. Remember, he left the hammer there. <laughs> and what did they say? This is what I want you to know what they said, because this is what's important about the story. Not about breaking the statues. Not about the hammer. What's important is what the people said when he told them, ask the big statue, he's got the hammer. They said, he can't hear and he can't speak. He can't answer us. And then what did he say? Why do you pray to him? You just said he can't hear. You just said he can't answer you. So why are you praying to him? Get it? Well, you remember what happened next. He had the argument with Nimrud. Nimrud threw him in the fire. Allah made the fire cool. But then he still had to leave, didn't he? And he went into Egypt. We talked about that. But what happened next? After he followed around in Egypt, different places that he went, he met some of the descendants of some of the other children of Adam. Because remember, there's no human being except all of them originally came from who? Adam and Eve. So now, when they met the king there, and the king gave them what? Some sheep and a girl named Hajar. Remember what happened to her? What happened next? And they went out into the desert. He took Hajar and her child, which was Ismail, into the desert. He left them. And then Allah made water come. What was the name of the water? Do you remember? Zamzam. Zamzam. Very good. You guys are paying attention. That's good. What did she do before the water came? Anybody remember? What did she do? She was looking for the... Yes, ma'am. She ran from Safa to Marwa seven times. She ran back and forth between Safa and Marwa seven times. Very good. What was she looking for? Somebody tell me, what did she want? Uh, she was looking for water. She was looking for water. Yeah. She was hoping to see something, though. What was she looking for? People. She was hoping there would be a caravan or something like that. Looking. Looking for people. Now, after the water came and they had water, then the people came, didn't they? Ah. And she told them, they asked her, you know, for permission to come. And she said, you can come, but you can't take over. 
And they respected that. They did. And we talked about what happened later after Ismail became older. He became bigger. He got married. One of the things we have to remember, when you get married, it's very important that you have to be good to your wife and honor her. And you have to be good to your husband and honor him. But the obedience is to Allah. The real obedience is to Allah and to his messenger and to your parents. So if your parents tell you something, you really need to listen to them. It's very important, this relationship with our parents. We've been talking about so many prophets that most people know about. Now let's talk about a prophet that a lot of people don't know about, or if they've heard his name, they're not real sure about his real story. His name is Lut. Can you say Lut? Lut. Now, the way they spelled it in English, with only one O, they thought it was Lot. Lot. They call him Prophet Lot. Well, he was very close to Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He lived about the same time. Now, remember, this is long after the flood. And what happened here is strange, really strange. Because Lut lived in a strange place called Sodom and Gomorrah. And the people there were very strange, too. Very strange. It was really bad. Now, Lut, he had some daughters. And they were pretty. But the men there didn't want to marry his daughters. In fact, the men wanted to be with other men. It's very strange. It's not normal. Not something Allah likes. It's really bad. This is mentioned in the scripture from before. And it's mentioned in Quran the same way. Let's talk about how Lut had to deal with the subject. Two travelers came to Lut's house. Knock, knock, knock on the door. He let them in. And he thought they were like just two men. They were very handsome. And he was very happy to have visitors. But then he found they were what? They were angels. Yeah, they were real angels. But he didn't realize right away. So when they came, then some people banged on his door. And these men were saying, Hey, we saw some handsome men go in your house. We want those guys. Send them out. He said, I can't. They're my guests. I'm protecting them. They said, come on, open the door. We want those guys. Come on, send them out. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. That's bad. And you guys are bad. And Lut had been telling them the same thing that all the prophets tell the people. There's only one God. Worship him. And stay away from things which are evil. And stay away from this real horrible thing what you guys are doing. This is bad. Don't do this thing. Not nice. But they didn't like that. Why? And Allah explains it to us real clear. Because inside of them, inside of those people, their desires had become so strong that they became almost like crazy. Because when a person wants too much and too many things and he keeps going like this, then his brain stops working right and he starts becoming <laughs> majnoon, crazy. And it happened. It happened to these guys. They were weird. But Lut, alayhi salam, he, peace be upon him, he kept protecting, protecting them. Not going to open the door. You can beat on it all you want to. And they were trying to break the door down, and it was getting really serious. The angels told him, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. But what you need to do, you need to take your wife and your family, and you need to get out, because Allah's punishment is going to come on these people. Now, Lut, he's a prophet. And he's trying to tell these people. And he did the same as we've learned before. He tried to warn the people about the punishment of Allah. This is called anger. Ghadab is anger. And azab, which means punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's telling them, have fear of this. You better be afraid of Allah's ghadab, his anger. And you better fear his azab, the azab of Allah, the punishment of Allah. And by the way, do you know how to say that in Arabic? Taqwa. Taqwa. Taqwa is to have something between you and Allah's anger and his punishment. You put up something between you and the punishment of Allah. How can you do that? Is to have taqwa for Allah and do what Allah likes and stay away from what he doesn't like. And he was trying to tell his people a simple thing. Just stop doing this thing you're doing. And they were going, no, you don't tell us what to do. They were bad. 
They did other things too. They did lots of other horrible things. But the most and worst thing of all, they didn't worship Allah. They didn't believe in Allah, and they didn't do what Allah wants them to do. They were very fasic, disobedient to Allah. Guess what happened? The punishment of Allah came. It came big time. Lut, he listened to the angels. They told him, you better get out of town. Okay. So what he did, he took his family, and he was leaving. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Because the punishment is coming. Big time. But his wife wouldn't go. She said, I'll stay here. Because she was from these losers. She was from these bad people. She stayed. Didn't go. Children are Muslim. What? Huh? Children are Muslim. Well, if you don't follow the prophet that comes to you, then you can't be considered as a true believer or a Muslim. So that's what happened. He had to leave her. Because you can't force anybody. Can you force somebody to be a Muslim? No. Can you force people to believe? No, you can't. There's no way. So they left. He took his family that would go, and they left. And after they went a certain distance for a certain period of time, then Allah made something happen. Now remember the flood that came with Noah? That was pretty bad, right? Look what Allah did this time. He made it rain again, only this time it didn't rain water. What do you think rained down on these people? Allah made it rain fire. Fire came down on them. Horrible fire. You know, it had stones in the fire, I guess, you know. Huh? What happened to her? Same thing. She burned up with them. It was horrible. So horrible. But this is what happens when people don't obey their prophet. This is what happens when they ignore the clear proofs. They ignore the warnings that come to them. They have to pay the price. They will suffer in this life, and they will suffer in the next life. We say the fire came from Allah, but obviously he made it come out of the sky. Some people said it was a volcano. Some people said that it was an eruption from the ground. It just went up in the air like a big gas fire or something like that. But does it really matter, does it? They burned up, all of them. And then what happened? Allah made all of it to go underwater, under, under, under. And some people say it's still there today at the bottom of a sea called the Dead Sea. What's strange about this sea is nothing grows there. Nothing at all lives there. Why? Because it has so much salt in it? Maybe. Or maybe because Allah just doesn't want anything to be alive there anymore. But that's what they say at the bottom of this sea is the place of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, it's a tourist attraction even today. If you go there, you'll find people who will take you and say, yes, there it is, and, you know, this is probably this, and that might be where this happened and that happened. It doesn't really matter. But what's the truth is, whenever Allah sends a messenger to you with a warning, then you have to do what? You have to obey. Obey your messenger and stay away from this dangerous thing. That is a little bit about the prophet Lut. Also, there's more about the prophet Lut that he was joined at one point back with Ibrahim alayhi salam, and they had many sheep and cattle, and they went different directions, and many good things like this. But the main point of the story of Lut, I think, is to mention about this subject and talk about it a little bit. Well, when people have desire to be close to another person like a marriage, when you get married, you want to be close to your husband, and you want to be close to your wife in a good way, and have children together. That's normal. Allah puts that in your head. But when people have this big desire that's really strange, it just burns inside of them, it starts going cuckoo. It starts clicking wrong in the head and in the heart. And they start desiring strange things that are not what Allah wants for you. Now let's ask the question, what if a person has this? Because many people today have this. In fact, in my country, they're saying that, oh, this is normal. It's okay, no problem. Kind of scares me because I keep thinking, hey, what am I doing here? And they're sounding like the people of Lut. They call them Kaumul Lut, the nation of Lut. But anyhow, what do we do? And I've had some of them come to me and say, what do I do? I have this inside of me. And it's a boy. He said, I'd rather be with a boy. I don't want to get married to a girl. I want to get married to a boy. I said, oh, 
But he said, but I, I don't know why that's in me. Can it be fixed? What do you think I told him? I told him, yes, it can be fixed if you believe in Allah, if you ask Allah, and if you make tawbah to Allah and you don't do it anymore. You know what he did? He sent me emails. And I wrote a big article for it and I put it on my website. And he read this article. And he read the article to his boyfriend. <laughs> that sounds strange, doesn't it? A boy and a boyfriend. Guess what happened? Both of them, they understood the message. Both of them, they made tawbah to Allah. Both of them became Muslims. Both of them stopped this way. One of them got married to a lady. The other one, he moved to the opposite side of the United States so he wouldn't see those people anymore. And this is amazing that he did that. When he sent me the last email, he said, I'll never write to you again because I changed my life. I changed my name. I changed everything. And I don't want to remember anything there. But I want to say big thank you to you. And thank you to Allah because this is how I got guided the right way. I cried when I read the letter. I became very, very happy because I see that Allah can work in many strange ways on anybody. So no matter how bad a person is, they need to remember if you just go to Allah and ask Him, ask Him to guide you, ask Him to forgive you, He can do that. That's Allah. When Allah guides you and Allah brings you to the right way, then inshallah you're in good shape and Allah forgives everything. It's one thing, by the way, to be punished in this life and it's quite another matter, the punishment that comes in the next life to the disbelievers. And it's even worse than anything here. And one of the things we know about this is that whoever is believing in Allah and doing what Allah wants them to do, Allah will make it easy for them here and definitely it will be better for them in the next life. And this is a good place for us to take some time and think about what we've been talking about. So I will say to you the greeting and listen for it back. Assalamu alaikum.